This is principlesofaccounting.com, chapter 15. I'm Larry Walther. In this particular module, we are going to look at the, some of the basic assumptions that underlie the preparation of financial statements in their presentation. Certain core principles or assumptions. Now, the first of these would be the entity assumption. The entity assumption holds that, that accounting information should be reported for the specific and distinct reporting unit. It's not necessarily based upon the legal definition of a unit. For example, an individual, although their economic affairs are commingled with their personal business affairs, we might still keep the business affairs separate and apart for measurement purposes. In other words, we're looking at the circumscribed area of interest or accountability being a business unit owned by an individual. We don't necessarily get any value from commingling their personal financial affairs with that report. Conversely, we can go to the other end of the spectrum. A consolidated financial statements are prepared when we have multiple entities that are under common ownership. Economically, it's viewed as one economic entity, even though there may be separate and distinct legal entities. So we try to look for units of accountability or entities and, and prepare financial statements based upon that entity concept. Another principle or assumption is the going concern assumption. Measurements are reported based upon the assumption that business will continue to operate into the future. We don't assume that a business uh, is subject to going away next year unless we have good reason to believe that might be the case. To do otherwise would give rise to the need to uh, maybe write off assets that have a long-term life when we're not sure they're going to be realized if the business were to cease and so forth. So by assuming that a business is going to continue to operate indefinitely into the future, it allows for us to make orderly accounting allocations and we don't necessarily need to concern ourselves with a depressed liquidation or distressed sale type scenario. We're going to look more realistically at the values that the business is going to capture from their assets. Continuing, another assumption that you've already been exposed to is the periodicity assumption. This simply holds that the continuous business process can be divided into specific measurement intervals such as a month or a quarter or a year. We know that business processes don't stop and start. We know that in accounting we have to make a number of adjustments or accruals to reflect the activity within a particular accounting time period based upon the assumption that we can divide the business cycles into periods for measurement purposes. If we didn't adopt this assumption, if we waited till business activities closed naturally, we would not be able to necessarily prepare timely financial reports. Another assumption that we make, very subtle but very important, is a monetary unit assumption. We assume that we can measure and report things in money. If you think about, for example, uh, uh, an area of land, we might express it as uh, square meters or acres or square feet. Those are measurements of quantities of land, but for financial reporting, we express those amounts in dollars. Typically, the amount paid in a purchase price in an arm's length transaction, although there's other values that might be ascribed to certain assets. Another assumption that we make that sometimes is violated is the stable currency assumption. Here, we look at cost and revenues incurred in different time periods, and although the value of purchasing power of the value of money might have changed over time, we don't adjust for those changes in value ordinarily. We assume that the monetary unit is stable over time. Obviously, where there's a lot of inflation, measures of performance and cost can be distorted because of the effect of inflation on currencies, but nevertheless, we live with that. In most cases, we live with that, and we, and we stick with a stable currency assumption.